All right. Um, so uh, we got to go to the PowerPoint really briefly, and all those PowerPoints on the website, so you have access to the PowerPoint. And remember, we have this little slide deck of uh, uh, supporting slides for a mostly whiteboard presentation. Okay. And we already saw a little bit from here. Uh, we showed this, how, how basically we're talking about radical stability, right? And, um, and uh, well, the, the main takeaway was that tertiary radicals are nice and stable, okay? And then secondary are a little less stable and primary were less stable than that. We, we discussed that in depth previously. This was the, the figure that explained that. It was hyperconjugation. All right. Okay, so this is this is the uh, little thing I needed to get get through. Um, you know, we talked about the uh, energy energetics of these reactions, right? We have propagation step one and propagation step two, and we talked about how how uh, propagation step one was a little endothermic, right? We did the calculation, a little endothermic, and this kind of shows that how. Propagation step one, which is, um, and we're, you know, we're, we're emitting termination because um, that's sort of like a separate event that just happens. All you, all you need is a little bit of termination to get the reaction going. But with propagation, it is a cyclic, of, a cyclic process. So like propagation step one will lead to propagation step two, and then you know, propagation uh, step two creates a CL radical again, and that, that kind of continues the process, right? So it's gonna go propagation step one, two, one, two, et cetera. Whoops. Okay, and um, anyway, the energetics of this, like we saw, there's a little bit of an energy barrier as you go from the chlorine radical ripping off the hydrogen atom of methane. We did the mechanism of that, it's not, uh, too crazy, and as this these react to make methyl radical and Cl2, it goes up in energy. But then, when propagation step two occurs and the methyl radical takes the chlorine atom from Cl2, and then you then then the energy and then the energy drops, and we we saw that that is really exothermic, right? We also did this calculation. We you know the the relative the energy difference from left to middle was two kilocalories per mole. And the energy difference from the middle down to the bottom was negative 27 kilocalories per mole. So we did that, we showed that with our little calculation. And of course, if you add those up, if you add two plus negative 27, you get negative 25. And that just shows that the overall reaction, the propagation reaction, is negative 25, which is a nice exothermic happy reaction. Okay. All right. Okay, so then we have one more little thing to think about. Um, so this is uh, lecture lecture point five. We were just on lecture point four, right? The the uh, mechanism was lecture point four, and this is called other halogenation reactions. All right. There's a lot of stuff here, so we'll we'll step through this really. Uh, slowly. All right, so don't don't get too scared. All right, so what we're doing here is we're looking at fluorination versus bromination versus chlorination versus iodination. And all we're doing is looking at the energetics. All we're doing is looking at the energetics of these, right? And which one did we do here? Um, we did chlorination, right? This is the one that we did, we stepped through the mechanism. The second one was chlorination. And the net reaction in terms of the um, all the bond cleavages and breaking and or, uh, bonds breaking and being formed, as we did all the math and we did the delta H calculation, we determined it was negative 25 kilocalories per mole, right? That's what we determined. It was exothermic. The reaction was exothermic, right? So this is what we just saw this, right? Okay, so now the question is, what if we look at other things like fluorination or bromination? and also iodination. Let's go to fluorination. If you do the same exact calculation, and it's all basically stepped through here, you don't have to do this in class or in my quizzes. Don't worry about doing these delta H calculations. But if you do this, based on all the bond dissociation energies, um, it, 
Uh, delta H is much more exothermic. So it's negative 103. The reason is, there's a, there's a couple of reasons, but yet, you know, when you add up all, add everything up, um, uh, the fluorine bond's a little bit uh, weaker. The fluorine bond's a little bit weaker. And this uh, fluoromethane is a, lot, a little bit stronger. The bond's stronger. When you do all the math, the delta H is negative 103 kilocalories per mole. So that's a much, much, much more exothermic reaction, okay? That is also explosive. So it's so energetic that it, this is actually not something you would do in a laboratory unless you have very special equipment because this will blow up the building. I mean, this is, this is a lot of energy, right? You have to be very, very careful with fluorination of stuff. Del uh, also, F2 is really, really toxic and dangerous and can just, it's a very difficult substance to work with. Chlorination is not that bad. This is something you could actually do in the lab uh, with a little less exothermic, you know. Bromination, we do the same calculation based on Br2 and methyl bromide, HBr, and it, it, it's, even, it's less exothermic. It is exothermic and it's a, a, a happy reaction, you know. You do, you do need to apply heat or light usually to get the uh, initiation started, but it's negative six kilocalories per mole, okay? That, this is gonna affect some things in a, in a little bit, right? Which one is the explosive reaction? Fluorination, very, we're gonna say it's unselective. Uh, that'll make sense in a second. Let's, let's uh, hold off on that. But for now, just you know, recognize fluorine is the kind of crazy, uncontrollable reaction Chlorine is kind of in the middle. Bromine is a uh, proper reaction. That's delta. That's negative six. It's a little exothermic. All right. Okay. So what? And I talked to you about this before. I said that iodination is kind of a problem, right? Well, well what's what's going on with iodination? And, and it's uh, it's not a reaction that'll occur. So that's the big X means we can't do it. So if you look at the trends here, you know, iodine is a very weak bond. Um, all, uh, you know, for methane, it's always 105 for the CH bond. Um, but the product is actually very weak. Uh, it's a weak bond, right? It's a not, not a very stable, strong bond. When you do the math, it's actually 13 kilocalories per mole. So this overall reaction is endothermic and it doesn't occur, all right? So you can't do iodination the same way you can do bromination, chlorination, fluorination, all right? So question, why are the top reactions more exothermic and the bottom reaction reactions less exothermic? Well, we, we can discuss that. It has to do with the, uh, the bond strength of the halogen and also the bond strength of the product, right? So the bond energy of the products, the third number, right? As you go down the list, the products are increasingly, increasingly less stable to the point where product formation is not favorable for ionization. Okay. All right, so back to the camera.